Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, March the 15th, 2024. Beware the Ides of March. Yes, today is March the 15th, the Ides of March, the anniversary of the assassination of Julius Caesar. So it would be then a good time to look at assassinations. And I do want to look at the horoscope of Julius Caesar and the um, day on which he was assassinated, see if we can find anything interesting. I want to look at some other assassinations. The assassination of a later Roman emperor, Caligula, whose chart um, I recently considered. He was actually assassinated on his Saturn return. Then there's the assassination of Bobby Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy's brother, sorry, John F. Kennedy's brother, um, in 1968. Uh, we've got also the assassination of Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in uh, 1984. And also John Lennon's assassination in December 1980. So these assassinations, they all have their different features and they're about perhaps different things. So, yes, I want to look at these five assassinations because it's the Ides of March, March the 15th. I think the Ides, yeah, the 15th of the month is when the Ides happen and uh, in the Roman calendar. Uh, the Ides were particularly important. Uh, but before I look at these five assassinations, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Friday, March the 15th, 2024. So there we have it. There are the five people I want to look at. Uh, top left, that's a bust of Julius Caesar. Uh, top right, that's a bust of Caligula, who I have looked at his chart quite recently. Then the bottom photographs, we've got uh, Bobby Kennedy, Indira Gandhi, and of course, uh, John Lennon. Overall, I don't think that today is particularly dramatic. I, I mean, the main thing going on is that the moon is moving into Gemini. Uh, moon moves into Gemini, London time, 3.16 in the morning. So for most of us, the moon is going to be in Gemini pretty much all day. Though if you're in uh, Asia, um, Australasia, the moon will go into Gemini perhaps much later in the day. Um Australia, New Zealand could be sort of early afternoon when the moon goes into Gemini. Um, East Asia, sort of late morning. So that does, to an extent, depend on your time zone. Um, but certainly in the Americas and Europe, we can effectively say that the moon is in Gemini all day. Um, so it is a bit of a change, uh, moon moving from Taurus to Gemini. Um, there's going to be perhaps a less certainty um, less stability, but more action, particularly on a verbal level. There's going to be more give. People are going to find it easier to communicate, um, but perhaps communicate in a somewhat cha chaotic manner. You know, the, the, the words will come pouring out. Um, in fact, we might use words as a defense mechanism. That's what Moon and Gemini can do don't want to engage with the real issues so you just talk your way through and it can sometimes work um, but still um, conversation uh, is going to perhaps be important uh, though we might find that the types of conversation we're involved in are often a bit lightweight that's the inclination to go for a sort of lightweight conversation um, you know nothing nothing too serious um, so up there, by the way, that, of course, is the, these are the positions for um, today, March the 15th, 2024, at noon. Um, there you can see uh, Moon in Gemini. In, this is, of course, in New York. Moon, in Ge moon is in Gemini uh, at 7 Gemini, New York time at noon. Um, 
it is making a square to Saturn. So that might put a little bit of damper of a damper on things. There might be a little more seriousness there. We can't just say exactly what we like, uh, because if we do, uh, we might run into trouble. Perhaps we'll say something that we haven't really thought through or we'll get our facts wrong. So don't just say uh, the first thing that comes into your head uh, because uh, it might not go down too well. So a bit of thought uh, wouldn't go amiss. And, you know, with the moon in Gemini, uh, you we can do some thinking. You know, Gemini is an air sign. We do have the capacity to think through what we're about to say and to sort of weigh up different options. So that is certainly uh, a possibility. Um, the moon uh, is also making a sextile to uh, sextile to Mercury. Now that is really uh, rather good uh, because you know the moon and Gemini. Sorry, the Moon and Mercury are the two communication planets. Uh, moon is more about emotional communication, communication which comes from the heart, and Mercury is about communication that comes from the head. And so with the Moon and the Mercury in sextile, uh, it is going to be relatively easy and natural to communicate. You know, we don't have to just focus on the facts we can listen to our feelings as well uh, so our feelings can guide our words um, because you know with the moon and mercury and sextile those two forms of communication communication from the heart and the head uh, they're in sync with each other so um, it might actually be quite a good time for explaining things making speeches um, it's all going to be very natural and perhaps with the moon sextile sorry the moon square saturn that might in certain circumstances provide a bit of structure, uh, a bit of give. So we know we can't get away with anything. Um, because because of that, we're a little bit careful. So actually, that moon square Saturn might make for very effective um, communication, you know, provided we take a serious approach. Uh, if, we, if we're completely trivial... Uh, as Moon in Gemini might encourage us to be, then uh, we might get into trouble. It's often said that, you know, people who don't take life seriously are the ones who get into, tr get into trouble. If we, if we laugh at the universe, the universe laughs back at us, and uh, that's not nice. As far as the heliocentric uh, position of the... Um, planets is concerned um oh i should just change that because i've got a um placidus placidus house cusps in there i did not want to have placidus house cusps let's just change that there that's better um so the heliocentric positions of the planets which i'm going to try to look at every day um give us uh, a slightly different view uh uh in fact a very different view um we can see here that the Earth is moving ever closer to that opposition of Neptune. Um, that's the same as a Sun conjunct Neptune, um, uh, by definition. Sun conjunct Neptune equals Earth opposition Neptune. So there's the Earth. And remember, heliocentric, this is... This is a position of the planet from the perspective of the sun. You put the sun in the middle of the solar system where it should be because astrologers tend to use a geocentric system with the earth in the middle. Um, I mean, we still have uh, this conjunction between Venus, Mars and Pluto, but it is breaking up, though I suppose we've now got Mars very much on the Venus-Pluto midpoint. Um, we had that yesterday. But that might sort of raise the temperature a bit. It might uh, take the edge off, you know, the Moon in Gemini's tendency for triviality. Mars on the Moon, Mars on the Venus-Pluto midpoint is it's about power, um, and perhaps using our knowledge of other people to try to um, force things through. Um, but that's that's the overall picture. Um, Mercury is 
starting to make a trine to Venus heliocentrically. Uh, and that adds to what I was saying about communication. The heliocentric Mercury trine Venus is going to help us be be communicative, and so it's really going to help us um, get our, get the words out. What I want to do now is I want to look at the astrology um, of the 12 signs. Now, astrologically, there is not a great deal happening today. I mean, the moon in going into Gemini is the main event. OK, the moon does make a trine to Pluto, uh, does make the square to Saturn, makes the, se- makes the sextile to Mercury. But I just don't think that today, all things being equal, um, is... Uh, particularly dramatic um, so let's uh, let's let's just change the coordinate system to give ourselves a normal chart there we go so these are my forecasts uh, for the 12 signs for today which is Friday March the 15th 2024 Aries you have got quite a lot to say today. Um, I mean, it may not be that the things you say have any great importance, but nonetheless, you still want to communicate. You, you just have a burning need to communicate. I mean, after all, Mercury, uh, the communication planet, um, is moving through Aries, your sign. Uh, so that does encourage you to communicate. And also, uh, the moon in Gemini is making a sextile uh, to uh, Mercury. So that really does uh, encourage you to say, you know, whatever's on your mind. Um, be careful a little, you know, because waste, talking too much is a waste of time and perhaps talking about the wrong things. So do consider what you're talking about. Um, you know, it, you might be inclined to say the first thing on your mind, but I would encourage you to um, give it some thought. Try to, try to get an understanding of what, what kind of impression you're, you're trying to create. Uh, you may, for example, feel but something has to be said right now. There may, you know, it's like there's going to be almost a smooth communication between your your brain and your mouth and the outside world. It's all one, it's all one line. It's all it all smoothly runs in that direction. Um, it is easy, uh, very easy. Um, but with the wrong words, you could cause offence. Or you could uh, make a fool of yourself. I mean, that is um, absolutely possible. But what about the right words? What if you say the right things? Well, today, um, Aries, you're actually in a position where you can bring people together. Um, You can address lots of different people you can um, focus on what people have in common rather than what makes them different yeah it's easy to focus on the differences but what about yeah what about the similarities and I think that by concentrating on these similarities you can uh, create a sense of uh, togetherness in terms of um, all the people around you, um, you know, by saying the right thing, someone might realise, oh yeah, you've, they've got something in common with you, and they've got someone's got something in common with with uh, another person, and so that actually can create a wonderful sense of community, um, provided you handle yourself um, correctly. So, um, a bit of mental and verbal discipline uh, could go a long way. Taurus, you perhaps take the view, Taurus, uh, that there are some 
financial issues to deal with or or perhaps that at least on a financial level things could perhaps be better i mean i'm not saying that uh, i'm not saying that things are bad i'm just saying things could be better um and you're maybe aware of how changes in the world the general flux of things uh can have an impact on your financial situation um you know particularly be- to with today when today might feel less stable than it was yesterday uh, a lot of things going on today i mean not necessarily particularly important things but just lots of little things are going on and when you're trying to make plans and perhaps when you're trying to conserve your resources it just may be hard work um keeping up with everything um so you going you're going to have to consider uh how you're going to be able to um handle this well i think that uh you have to have a clear sense taurus of your vision um you know of who you are and what you're trying to achieve um and yes there may be lots of little things going on but if you keep in mind this vision then i think it's going to be okay um you you will be able to negotiate um a path through and um in terms of in terms of money um things should be okay but still i have to say that the moon is making a square to venus and um, venus is your ruler and moon square venus can sometimes be associated with overindulgence um over expenditure uh that venus venus in pisces may reflect other people who want to spend money or are encouraging you to spend money uh might be your family could be just the people you meet in your social life i suppose friday end of the week some people you know reg- you know let their guard down on friday and uh, money gets spent but i mean it is unnecessary um so you have to use some discipline there um you know i i said that to, i said that to aries as well but in in your case that discipline may come uh may may relate to how you deal with people how you deal with other people's demands and you know whatever the demands whatever the pressures you've got to go back to yourself and your vision and what your original plans were for the day so yes have a plan for the day perhaps start the day with a plan um and then as you go through the day as there as as you meet these various pressures uh consider does this pressure fit your plan and if it doesn't fit your plan then hold firm and that's probably the way to get through it uh, and so um believe in yourself taurus and don't allow yourself to be distracted gemini the moon is pretty much in your in your sign today uh okay if you're in australia or new zealand uh the moon is not going to go into gemini until till sort of lunchtime early afternoon but still it gets there in the end um so with uh the moon being in gemini uh you are going to be feeling relatively confident uh you're going to be confident uh in your own ideas you're going to take the view that uh, you understand what's going on uh even if things are a bit confusing you still you still understand and you you do need to be quite strong in some cases uh because there is a square coming up between the moon and saturn so the moon in, uh, in gemini is squaring saturn in pisces now in astrology moon square saturn is often regarded as being a difficult aspect um because you know saturn restrains the moon it can be um about the repression of of one's feelings so 
that can be the problem with moon square Saturn. But I think this square between uh, the moon and Saturn may not be such a bad thing. It may actually be quite useful um, because, you know, the moon in Gemini, obviously going through your sign, Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces is a sort of a high profile sign from a Gemini perspective, um, often connected with the place of work, with employers, employees, no more employers, um, status. And with the moon square Saturn, you will be taking yourself seriously and you will be taking your position seriously. And if you are in a position of any authority with this moon square Saturn, then you are in a position to establish your authority, um, to set yourself up as a serious figure, uh, but not such a serious figure. You, you've got that Gemini flexibility, you've got the ability to communicate, um, particularly as moon, the moon is making a sextile aspect to Mercury, your ruler. Um, but uh, you will still be taken seriously. And, and, th and that matters. Um, now, you've got to respect that, though. If you're in a position where you can be taken seriously, then you've got to make sure that the way you communicate is serious. Um, yeah, you can, you can have moments of levity. You can make jokes. You can, um, yeah, you can show the, show the world that you've got a sense of humour. But Moon Square Saturn within limits. Do not forget uh, what you are trying to achieve. Still, um, I think it should be a fun day. Uh, there are people to meet, uh, people to talk to, and most importantly, you can establish yourself as a serious person with a quicksilver sense of humour. Cancer. You're probably not entirely in the mood for um, wild socialising, for um, being here, there and everywhere. You know, that could just be so exhausting. Um, and I would suggest, Cancer, that, you know, at the beginning of the day, uh, you you consider where you feel most secure and most safe and that you stick with it uh, still I I do think there is going to be quite a lot of uh, communication I mean it is a communicative day for everyone um, and we mustn't forget that the moon is your ruler and the moon your ruler is in Gemini sextile Mercury. So yes, you've got things to say. Um, but you probably don't want to say too much. Um, you need to sort of make your point. And once you've made your point, and you've certainly got a point to make, uh, you, you don't have to go on. You've probably done what you need to do. Um, I should also say that if you are spending too much time talking to people, uh, particularly unfocused conversation, at some stage during the day, uh, you might have a conversation with someone who you realise you completely disagree with them over some quite major issues. Uh, you then have to decide what you do. You know, it's OK to disagree with people, um, it can be fun to disagree with people. Uh, but I'm saying that from a perspective of a Gemini. Um, if you're a Cancer, uh, disagreements could get out of hand. Um, you know, even, you know, if you're talking, discussing something, you know, discussing religion or politics, uh, then that could cause real problems. Uh, what someone thinks politically could impact your relationship with them or philosophically or or they might do something which shows which really shows to you what their real view of the world is and you might find that um, somewhat uh, disturbing which 
brings me on to the subject of relationships. Um, I think looking at relationships, there seems little doubt that you and the people close to you are not entirely on the same wavelength today. Um, I'm not saying it's a big disaster, but just today, possibly you should be very wary in one-to-one relationships. Um, Avoid too much talking. Because if you have too much talking, then you're increasing the chances of hitting an area of disagreement. So if you value your relationship with someone, uh, perhaps you shouldn't talk to them or you should keep conversation down to an absolute minimum because if you do talk to them a lot, then sooner or later um, there might be a clash. Leo. It's, I think in most cases... uh, a fairly should be a fairly pleasant a day for you um there's not a great deal going on uh but uh i think that you can enjoy other people's company uh particularly other people's company where there isn't a great deal at stake um where where no one is vying for attention or vying for superiority or going on power trips where just everyone is just enjoying people's company for the sake of it and there's no great purpose um in what you're doing um i i think that is the that's the that's the best way to handle um the day's energies um but i suppose we do have to be aware, though, that the sun, which is your ruler, uh, sun rules Leo, is conjunct the Uranus-Pluto midpoint. Um, so if the sun is conjunct the Uranus-Pluto midpoint, uh, some Leos may have a great desire to um, create change. Uh, you know, you might just be unhappy with the existing order. So going back to what I was saying that, you know, today might be a day for just having sort of um, gentle conversations with people, with, you know, people you know, but where there's no big agenda, that's the way it should be. But if you spend too much much time with people or out there in society, um, you might suddenly stop and think and think, hold on, where is this going? Um, Is this really um, the way you want it to be? And sort of something from the perhaps, you know, the depths of your unconscious might start to make itself felt, something bubbling to the surface and you're saying, no, you're not happy with the status quo. And then you might realize that you want to change everything, uh, that you might actually become a disruptive force. You weren't really planning on being a disruptive force, but you could end up being a disruptive force. Um, This means it's very important that you are self-aware. Because if you're not self-aware, you just might find yourself being disruptive for the sake of it, or disruptive and you, you don't even know what you're doing. But if you if you consider what is wrong, what don't you like about the world around you? What would you like to change? Then you can act in a more rational and effective way. And at the same time, the moon is sextile Mercury. Perhaps this moon sextile Mercury is a means by which you, Leo, can engineer change you know mercury is in aries and and from a leo perspective that means that uh, you do have opinions um about uh about the world um about uh the way things should be run the way things should not be run and yeah 
it may be best that you express these opinions in a controlled kind of way um, and so people can understand what's bothering you. And perhaps once people understand what's bothering you, once people understand your view of the world, they will be in a position to provide some useful feedback. And that may allow you to create the changes you want to create, but in a natural, organic way um, that doesn't cause uh, too much upset. Virgo. Mercury is your ruler. And the moon is making a sextile to Mercury. And I think that is good. Um, you have a lot of power. Um, it's the power of words. It's the power of what you say. Um, you can say things which are backed up by with effective force, or at least that will, that's the impression um, that you will give the outside world. And when I say effective force, I'm not talking about um, you know, physical violence or anything like that. I'm more talking about um, the force of your emotions. Uh, when you talk, uh, you will give the impression of being a serious player. Um, that you've um, you have you're not just saying things for the sake of it. You're saying things because you really have um, thought them through, um, and your words can can cause uh, a lot of um, disruption, uh, and they can make people sit up and think. And if you run into any resistance today and you might run into some resistance um, not everyone likes what you're trying to do uh, that's especially the case uh, if you are in an environment like you know a working environment or you're involved in with some organization and you're trying to move things in a particular way yeah there is going to be resistance and I actually think you're going to be able to deal with this resistance very well. If you if you do hit resistance, uh, you will be able to fight back. I think mainly with the words and arguments. Um, Maybe not just the spoken word, but also the written word. Um, you will be able to explain yourself extremely well, um, and um, the. Your explanations will be backed up by the power of the power of your feelings, um, and that's going to that is going to create a a very strong um, impression. Having said that, I I think uh, to, today's square between the moon and Saturn um, may gravitate against our. Uh, close one-to-one -one relationships I think relationships if it's just you and another person and nothing else then I'm not convinced that it's really going to work out um, I think you will be on a different wavelength um, and if you the longer you spend with a single person the more you'll feel sort of dissatisfied that this person is um, taking up too much of your time, too much of your space. Uh, yeah, sure, you know relationships are important. I mean, after all, we've got Venus, Saturn, Sun and Neptune in Pisces, your opposite sign. But today, uh, I think perhaps you should be focusing on other things, um, if possible. And, you know, because also, you also have to remember what happens from an unconscious perspective. If you're in a relationship with someone, you're if you're spending time with someone who you who is getting on your nerves sooner or later you'll say something and uh, those words could come out as being quite sharp and and also disruptive um, so yes uh, I would recommend Virgo that you do 
uh, have give yourself a certain amount of independence and that you're relying on yourself and you don't need um, to have people around you uh, to be happy and fulfilled but uh, just bear in mind the power of your words today can uh, is, is quite amazing and it can perhaps achieve something special Libra you are not entirely satisfied um, with the way things are you believe that things should be moved on I mean I suppose perhaps you're reacting from the fact the last couple of days um, the moon has been in Taurus and you, know, you perhaps you felt a little bit hemmed in uh, and now you and now you're feeling well uh okay things have changed uh it's time for you to change uh, it's time for you to look be looking for uh you know new horizons uh and new ideas um but there is going to be resistance um that resistance may not just come from people but it may actually come from the minutiae of your immediate environment um, there are things around you um, that need to be dealt with uh, you thought you dealt with them yesterday or the day before but they haven't gone away um, and you might then with a great sigh have to just get down to sorting it all out and sure it's going to be a bore but I don't think that it will take too long um, and once you've got everything out of the way you will be able to indeed um, move on um, and while you're at it uh, I think that you're going to have um, a lot to say remember it's a, for pretty much all of us it's a very verbal day uh, and that is because the moon is sextile mercury and in your case uh, mercury is moving through aries your opposite sign so with moon sextile mercury uh, you have um, a lot to say about the world and uh, you'll also find that uh, other people are in, the, are in take a similar view they will have a lot to say so a lot a lot of communication and you know, you're just a person to have this kind of communication um, because you understand, perhaps because you're an air sign, uh, you know, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius are the three air signs, but because you're an air sign, you realize that it's just words. You can say all sorts of things. You can express all sorts of ideas. It doesn't matter. Um if you, if you and someone else have a difference of opinions, well, that's just a difference of opinion. So what? It's nothing personal. Um, and I think that view is is going to be constructive. And in fact, if you hear something you disagree with, um, you should be pleased um, because it's giving you an opportunity. It's giving you variety. It's giving you a chance to uh, reconsider your own views you know you're not right about everything you're not precious about any of your views i don't think uh so that might be a good opportunity to um to ch you know to change your mind about something um turning to relationships um you know some people are very charming uh today and they're able to uh spin uh spin a web that is kind of attractive and appealing um and i think you might find that uh s they want you to be part of that web um is now i'm not necessarily talking about romance or anything it's just being part of something there is pressure for you to be part of something um, and I'm not necessarily saying it should be resisted and being part of something 
it's not just about one-to-one relationships. It can be about being part of society, uh, part of an organisation, uh, part of a community. And uh, yes, there may be pressure for you to join, to join something. Um, and, you know, even if, you're, if you've been in a single relationship with one person for a long time, that other person is still going to be consciously or unconsciously providing pressure for you to be part of something, um, to be more involved with that relationship, at least for today. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Uh, It's just, it's just, uh, um, I would suggest that you think it through and ask yourself whether you want to be closer to someone. Uh, Is that what you want? Um, Listen to what, yeah, just say, listen to what they're saying, listen to the body language. Um, You know, that should give you some important, important clues. Um, Now, I'm talking about joining things. It's not just about one-to-one relationships. I think today, Libra, there is going to be pressure to join things, to sign up for things. In that case, you have to be more careful. You, You don't want us to sign up to things that sound appealing on the surface, especially if money's involved, there's always people trying to get you to sign up for some new monthly thing. You know, what's a, what's a few dollars a month going to cost you? Well, yeah, but if you keep giving people a few dollars here, a few dollars there, well, in the end, you come bankrupt, don't you? But uh, yeah, don't join things um, unless you, you unless you really think it through, unless it is um, right for you. Scorpio. You're probably not really in the mood for um, widespread social interaction. Um, You probably take the view that there are better things to do and that certain people are capable of wasting a great deal of your time and... um, that might be it. Um, you know, why waste your time? But I think the reason you're taking your reason you're taking that approach is because you, it's because you're looking at it from a perspective of you uh, being forced into doing something, and that might be your view as soon as you engage with the world. You know, what do these people want? What do they want me to do? And you just might take. You don't want. You don't want. You don't want to do anything. At least you don't want to do anything that someone else is telling you to do. But maybe Scorpio, you should look at it from another point of view, um, because right now you are actually pretty charismatic. I would have said you might not feel charismatic, uh, but. As soon as you start engaging with people, uh, your words are actually going to be very effective and um, people are going to sort of feel that they want to become part of you and your various schemes. It's kind of the opposite for what I was just saying to Libra. So I was talking to Libra uh, just now. I don't know whether you heard, but... um, when I was talking to Libra, I was warning Libra that they have to be careful about people trying to get them to sign up to things. Um, but who is trying to get any? Who is trying to get these people to sign up to things? Well, you know what? It could be Scorpio. It could be you are trying to get people to sign up to things. Now that might not be your plan, um, but somehow, when you, as soon as you start, uh, as soon as you start engaging. Uh, then you may find that that's actually what you're doing. It may be trying to get people to sign up to an idea, uh, to sign up perhaps to your particular view of the world. You certainly have a view of the world. Every Scorpio has a very strong view of the world. And I suppose you probably think you're right about it uh, in all cases. So that is a good reason, as far as you're concerned, to get people to sign up to your your way of looking at things um so this does allow you uh to get your way in many areas so for example if you're 
engaged in um, in your work or you're a salesperson, um, I think you'll be very effective. Um, you'll be a, you'll be very effective without coming across as being, I don't know, an obnoxious extrovert. I mean, that's a standard um, idea of a salesperson um, being an obnoxious. Um, uh, being an obnoxious extrovert that's something you know I got, you know when i was i did spend a week trying to sell encyclopedias when i was 18 it was a complete disaster I, obviously i didn't sell any uh bit complete disaster but then i'm not a scorpio and i'm certainly not an extrovert but yeah if you are trying to sell things um it uh may not uh yeah i think you're going to be very effective and you may not even think you're being effective, um, but I think it's because you're going to know um, which levers to pull. Sagittarius. The moon is now moving into Gemini, which is your opposite sign. Um, now, with the moon moving into Gemini, uh, you are going to be uh more focused on other people i think um on the world out there um you're going to realize that certain people do have an impact on you um that's just the way it is i mean that's i suppose part of the human condition but today in particular that is going to be uh uh important but you do have to be careful how you deal with the situation because the moon is making a square to saturn and with this moon square saturn i'm thinking that maybe you will have the capacity to scare people away you know there are people that want to get in touch with you and in many cases they don't mean any harm um you do have to be you know you do have to be in touch with people you know right now with the moon um the moon in gemini you have to know what's going on uh you, you can't know what's going on unless there's good communication but with moon square saturn um there may be a a difference of opinion or you may say something or do something that just completely puts people off uh, it'll be very easy for you to put people off to scare people away uh, you just dig your heels in um, end of matter but in the process uh, you could be missing out on, on, a, on missing out perhaps on an important opportunity and so if you are wary of someone you're not sure whether or not you can trust them don't just close them down for the sake of it without thinking about it engage with them engage with them uh, on a uh, sort of a mental level after all um the moon is sextile mercury uh moon and gemini is sextile mercury and aries that indicates um a lot of conversation um uh you can really argue about things, discuss things, and very quickly uh, you can understand um, what someone is trying to achieve. And then you'll be able to make an opinion. Okay, may, and maybe you'll decide you don't, want to you don't want to have anything more to do with a particular person, but at least you've given them a chance to, you've given them a chance to express themselves, to tell you what they're, try what they're trying to do. And in a way, you'll also be given, giving yourself a chance. Uh, perhaps this person could have been good for you, but maybe through a few minutes of conversation, you've, you've found out that uh, the opposite is the case. And really, Sagittarius, that's about it. As I have said right at the beginning of the piece, there's not a lot going on astrologically, um, really for any of the signs. It's not a particularly busy day. Uh, so that's why I am being uh, briefer than usual. Capricorn, you have a view. 
about the way things should be running and you're not really prepared to compromise that view. Um, you've worked it all through. Um, and, and why should you have to make changes? Um, it, it just seems completely unnecessary. But Capricorn, I would remind you that there are always two ways of doing things. Um, there's your way of doing things and there is another person's way of doing things. Um, th they reach the same end point probably at pretty much the same time. Um, so one way of doing things is not necessarily any better than another way of doing things. And so if you are presented with a different idea, a different approach, you know, don't be necessarily hostile. I don't think that it's a question of being right or wrong. Um, it's just an acceptance that different people have um, different views. And um, really, uh, that should be it. This may be especially important in terms of uh, the family. Uh, uh, I think uh, family, the family and the domestic environment could be important today. Um, and there may be things that have to be worked through with family members. Um, you know, there is this very communicative moon sextile Mercury today. And... Um, that does indicate a lot of discussion, but discussion t taking place sort of behind the scenes, not in the um, not in the outer world. And so that could refer to you and members of your family uh, talking things through. So if you feel that something's not right in a family setting, uh, then probably the answer is to talk about it. Um, and through... Um, a good conversation where everyone is honest. I think that you have a you know you have a good chance of resolving matters. Turning to relationships, um, there is a square aspect between Moon the Moon and Saturn today. Uh, this Moon Saturn square could be uh, a bit difficult. Uh, you know, Saturn represents you. Um, the moon represents uh, the other person. And so with moon square Saturn, you and another person may have a difference of opinion. Um, and as I've already suggested, a difference of opinion about something which is stupid. Uh, I mean, something where there shouldn't be a difference of opinion. You know, two... two Two, perhaps two approaches which may be different but have the same result. Um, so if someone says, you know, if someone says something that's, you know, that's at odds with what you're thinking, uh, you know, don't just close them down. Um, it may just be a situation where uh, you and, and the other person just need to just accept your differences Um you know, this moon square Saturn is its not about uh, a major breakup or anything like that. It's just about a, a difference of opinion. It, it's not it's not a it's not a major thing. And just through accepting the difference between you and another person, I, I do think that uh, um, things are going to be um, going to be much healthier. There's no point. There's no point after all in. Uh, just happily thinking that you and everyone else are on exactly the same wavelength and being in denial about underlying differences. No, it's better to accept the differences because once you accept the differences, uh, you're in a position to be able to negotiate. Aquarius. It's, uh, in many respects, quite a light day. I mean, after all, you know, the moon is moving into Gemini. And from an Aquarian perspective, the Gemini is uh, 
a, you know, a very creative sign. And better still, the moon is making a sextile to Mercury. Um, so, so Aquarius, you are going to be able to um, communicate very effectively. And, you know, when you communicate, uh, you know, you will bring to bear, I think, um, a great sense of fun. Um, you will be able to amuse people um, without really having to try. Uh, so don't hold back. Uh, you know, if you want to tell a joke, it's OK. Uh, I mean, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? The joke can fall flat. Um, so, uh, but it's, it's, also, it's, it's also about, yeah, about engaging your sense of humour. Um, because uh, I think you, you know, you can really start, you can really lighten things up. And I think in many respects, things need to be lightened up. And you're just, you're just the person right now to create that levity. Still, there may be a moment of challenge uh, where everything seems to be going in a particular direction, a, a direction that is smooth and natural. But for one reason or another, you are resisting it. Um, this resistance, uh, I don't know, what is it about? Just you've got a few fears. You're saying, well, yeah, if everyone were to just be themselves, if you were to be yourself, what would the consequences be? Uh, have you really thought through the consequences? Maybe it would have a financial or a material cost or... Someone might get upset, but these these concerns they shouldn't bother you. I mean, after all, you are an independent-minded Aquarius, and I think that you can uh, just you know you can run free. And if there are any issues, um, any concerns, remember the Moon is sextile uh, Mercury. And this is a a wonderfully communicative aspect, and it, it's about talking things through, um, not taking the view that things can never be changed, not taking the view that there is an uh, an, an, unmo uh, an an obstacle that can't be moved. It's just being able to talk through anything, and really, that is the way forward. Pisces, you possibly take the view that uh, you, you've done whatever you need to do and it's now time to just um, relax a bit. Uh, just forget the pressure. Um, don't give in to the pressure. Um, just carve out your little niche and stay in that niche until things have changed. Uh, I think that is in some ways an acceptable view. Um, but if you spend too long in one place today, especially if you're um, with other people, uh, then problems might arise. You know, I'm I'm thinking particularly when I say other people, I'm thinking particularly um, of your family, your domestic environment, uh, what's going on there. Y you may actually be the problem yourself. Uh, you know, remember, Saturn is moving through Pisces. Uh, uh, so with Saturn, through Pi Saturn moving through Pisces, you can be the one... Uh, who's weighing everyone down. And so you might think, oh, you, you stay at home. Uh, that's a nice relaxing thing to, thing to do. But yeah, if there are people around you at home, maybe members of your family, they, they, might, may, they might find you to be uh, troublesome, just a difficult person to have around. Uh, okay, I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but uh, what I'm really saying is, that you do need to keep moving. If you stay in one place for too long, um, that place you're staying in might actually become intolerable, not just for you, but for 
other people. So um, just consider um, the impact uh, you might be having. And at the same time, um, be ready to listen. Very important to listen today. Um, there are people around you who have got, who have got important things to say. Um, not just important because of the content, uh, but because of the general need to communicate. Communication is important today, and some of the people around, yeah, some some people, some people important to you, need to communicate, and you need to allow them to communicate. Um, at the very least, you'll be helping them to release tension, but maybe by listening to what someone else has to say, uh, you may be in a uh, position to benefit. That's it. Those are my forecasts of the 12 signs. I was brief. A reason I was brief is simply because um, there's not much going on today. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, Moon's moving in through Gemini. Moon's just moving into Gemini. It's making a sextile to Mercury and really... That's pretty much all there, is, all there is to say. And so maybe the I Ching will give a different view. So I asked the question, um, you know, what is Friday going to be like for those watching uh, the I Ching segment of this video? And uh, the first hexagram I got was hexagram 17 which is following. Um, this is the principle of um, f following something, obviously. Um, it may actually be about pursuing something. Um, you know, Greg Winkup in his translation, he refers to this hexagram as the hunt. It means that we're looking for something, game in the field, um, and perhaps we are um, working on the behalf of someone else looking for game in the field. Um, but still, there is this sense of of following. Um, and then there's a question is, how successful are we going to be? And I think in the first instance, um, it may be it may be a bit problematic. I mean, to begin with, we are aware that there is change in the air. Um, you know, maybe that relates to the fact that uh, the moon is moving from Taurus into Gemini. Uh, something, a, a situation which was very static into something far more mobile. Uh, we're aware of this change, but we're not entirely we're not entirely sure how to deal with the change. And as a result of this change, we might feel that our influence starts to um, actually go down, that we have less influence over the people around us and because we're not really in tune with this change as it's happening. Um, and this raises the question of what do we do about it? And it's just important that we um, choose our friends carefully. Uh, we cannot be friends with everyone. Uh, we can't follow everyone. Um, likewise, if we're in a position of leadership, um, yeah, we are attracting followers, but we can't be followed by everyone. Um, there are some people who are future orientated, who represent where we should be going. And there are other people who represent the past, people who are going to drag us down. And we have to make the distinction between the two. And so it's going to be very important to choose our friends carefully. But once we've done all that, once we've accepted the changing situation, once we've chosen the right friends, we've, we've made the right contacts, then we're going to be in a position to be successful, to get the support uh, we feel we deserve. Um, and I think we'll end up um, 
you know, following the right thing. And th that leads, leads us to the second hexagram, uh, which leads us to hexagram, um, hexagram 17. Sorry, no, sorry. Hexagram, uh, hexagram, sorry, hexagram 64, which I have given it the wrong label. Let me just uh, change the label. It's hex. I, I call it hexagram 17. It's actually hexagram 64. There we are. Sorry about that. Yeah, that leads to hexagram 64, which is before completion. So in the previous hexagram, 17 we were we were essentially chain we were making a change to uh to our own situation as a result of a wider situation which was sort of in flux um and having done that we're trying to make the big step forward um and before completion gives us the idea of us trying to get to the other side of a river uh, you know, we're in the middle of a river, struggling to get to the far bank, um, but we haven't reached it yet. And so the question is, are our preparations adequate? And in order to completely see things through, we're going to have to be really careful uh, because there's plenty of scope for making mistakes. Um, and if we make mistakes... Um, we're probably not going to be forgiven. So we've got to get it right. And, you know, we're, even when we're really close to the bank, we mustn't assume that we've got there. We haven't got there until we're, until we're there. So don't lower your guard just before you get to your destination. You have to make sure you actually get to your destination. Um, because one mistake just before your destination could mean you never get there. But I'm, sure, I'm confident um, that you will be diligent and that you will be able to see it through. OK, that's the I Ching. And now I want to turn to the astrology and the Ides of March. Well, the Ides of March today is March the 15th, the anniversary of the assassination of uh, Julius Caesar. And... We don't know for sure when he's born. Uh, there, there are controversies about his the calendar. I mean, if you look on Wikipedia, I think you say he's born on July the 12th, 100 BC. Uh, but the calendar being used then wasn't was changed. So one can't just look for July the 12th, 100 BC. You have to um, make some adjustments. Um, Obviously, I didn't make the adjustments. I went to astro.com. Um, even astro.com suggests two different charts. Um, but uh, I have... Um, uh, I've, I've, I've gone for this chart, uh, which is June... The I know it says June the 27th. I think it's June the 29th. So um, this is um, Julius Caesar's horoscope for noon. Perhaps it may be his horoscope. Um, I can't guarantee that it's his horoscope. Um, I suppose uh, main theme here. I mean, he's got according to this, he's got a Mercury Saturn opposition. Uh, I suppose if you've got a Mercury Saturn opposition, you could be a good organizer. He was certainly a good organizer, and uh, he was he was a writer. Uh, uh, yeah, at school I had to. I I had to. What did I read? I was read his his accounts of the Gallic Wars. I I can't, I can't remember anything. Um, all I can remember is the first few lines of the first piece on the Gallic Wars. Cum Kaiser esset in Citore, cit, city or Gallia when Caesar was in Cisalpine Gaul. He was talking about his Gallic campaigns. Um, But what uh, what perhaps matters with Caesar, at least what matters from the perspective of the Ides of March, um, is his assassination. And uh, here is his uh, the chart of his assassination, uh, March the fifth. Says March the thirteenth. Um, 
Uh, but in fact, it was March the 15th. Uh, I mean, it makes an adjustment. That is a chart for March the 15th, 44 BC, even though it says March the 13th. Um, so that is the, that's the chart for his assassination. I don't know what time of day he was assassinated. Um, I I kind of have this lack of a feeling for these ancient charts. They just, they just feel weird, these charts. Um, so he was um, assassinated... Um, with sort of Uranus Pluto square, um, that was what was going on, and Sun Mercury conjunction in Pisces. Uh, I said I, I don't have a great feel for this chart, but what I perhaps wanted, what I perhaps have a little bit of a feel for, is the connection between the two charts. So we're going if we put Julius Caesar in the middle and we put his assassination um, uh, on the outer wheel. Um, the thing that grabs me is the fact that he was he appears to have been assassinated on his um, North Node return. Uh, so the nodes, you know, the nodes have uh, have a, the North Nodes have a cycle. We have a, quite a long cycle, um, and so when the nodes return to where they were when he was born, that's when he was assassinated. Now, I'm not sure, no, the Romans did not really believe in reincarnation, but uh, there may be, have been a sense of it being his fate for him to be um, uh, assassinated when he was assassinated. And at the time, he, at the time of the assassination, the Saturn was exactly semi-square, his south node, sorry, Let's say it again. Saturn was exactly semi square of the south node. Um, that was in the squi- in the sky. It says the south nodes. You could say that the south nodes are are, are connected with uh, associations. If you take the German perspective, south nodes. The south node is your associations. Uh, Saturn semi square. Your south node is difficult associations. Um, um, these associations not working out as you as you would expected, being limited by your associations, or perhaps being killed by your associations, and so him having Saturn semi square his his nodal axis uh, perhaps meant he was betrayed by people he trusted, um, like Brutus. Uh, so that's really all I'm going to say about his chart. Um, in a way, his assassination of the five assassinations I'm going to look at, um, I actually find that the least the least interesting. And maybe that's because there's a certain doubt about when he was assassinated, you know, when he was bought. Sorry, there's, I think the, the assassination day is clear, but his own birth date is not absolutely clear because there are alternative charts. Sometime later... Um, in uh, 41 AD, uh, what, 80, that would have been about 80, uh, over 80 years later, uh, Caligula was assassinated. He was cal- assassinated by the Praetorian Guard. So here's Caligula's horoscope. Um, you know, whenever I, th- whenever I think of Caligula, I thought you think of... Um, um, I think of Malcolm McDowell in that film Caligula, that seventies film. Um, you know, right at the end, covered in blood, being assassinated by the Praetorian Guard, um, and he's a Virgo. Uh, that's a reminder that Virgos, when Virgos go crazy, Virgos can be completely crazy. Um, you can imagine all the weird, mad details that um, um, that. Caligula must be must have been thinking about um, during his reign. Um, he was assassinated on. Here's a chart of his assassination. Um, he was assassinated. Um, I've got his assassination somewhere. Uh, he was assassinated on. Uh, let me get his chart up seems to have disappeared but he was assassinated on january the 
24th um yeah january the 24th sorry january the 20 january the 24th 41 ad it says january the 22nd but that that's just an adjustment this is a chart for january the 24th um around lunchtime i think i think he was going to lunch when he was assassinated so this is that this is a chart for noon um which maybe you know when it happened around then he was assassinated on a mercury jupiter conjunction in aquarius uh i suppose this was when the praetorian praetorian guard they made their decision um and uh we put caligula in the middle and the assassination uh you know he was a young emperor and his saturn was at 212 scorpio and he was assassinated with, with Saturn at 138 Scorpio. So he was he was assassinated on his Saturn return. I suppose if you have a reign of madness and mayhem and and uh, murder, then at some stage it's going to catch up with you, and it's going to ca- it's going to catch up with you um on your saturn return isn't it i mean that's a good chance if you've been been made emperor young um another thing that he has in his chart uh is that here's his here's caligula's mars and there's his saturn he has jupiter on his mars saturn midpoint in his natal chart so if you've got jupiter on your mars saturn midpoint uh at its worst i mean okay Anthony Blinken, um, the Secretary of, United States Secretary of State, has Jupiter on his Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, I suppose you could say that uh, people may have been hurt because of his decisions. I mean, I suppose Secretary of State, and of course we had the Ukraine war on his watch. Um, I don't know how he related to all the killing in in the Ukraine, um, but I don't know. Um, he could have done something to stop it. Maybe that's how his Jupiter on the Mars Saturn midpoint was working. Um, did he enjoy it? I don't know. I'm not saying he did. But Caligula, with Jupiter on his Mars Saturn midpoint, if we believe Suetonius um, in the Twelve Caesars, um, uh, you know, he'd really got off on killing people. He was violent, and if you've, you know, if you, you know, you've seen that film Caligula, I mean, of course, that film Caligula is probably a largely fictional account of it. But the image of Caligula of, is of a complete psychopath, um, and so it would fit for him to have Jupiter on the Mars Saturn midpoint. And he was assassinated with Mars conjunct his Jupiter. So Mars. Hitting his was exactly conjunct his Jupiter on the day he was assassinated, and Mars was also on his Mars Saturn midpoint. So that all fits together um, rather nicely. I now want to look at some um, more modern charts of uh, you know people we we might actually have heard of. Uh, well, we have heard of Julius Caesar and uh, Caligula. I hope we have. Um, but people we've got photographs of, um, that we have the times of their assassinations. Um, and one person that I find really important in terms of his assassination chart is uh, of what's going on when he was assassinated was Bobby Kennedy. I'm not going to look at the the, the assassination of JFK, because you know the assassination of JFK has been done to death. Oh, sorry about the pun. Was that intended? I don't know. Um, but Robert Kennedy, uh, Bobby Kennedy, um, he was born November the twentieth, nineteen twenty-five. Before considering um, the assassination chart, can we see his assassination in his own chart? Well, we can see the risk, can't we? Uh, he has got Mars in Scorpio on the seventh house cast. If you've got Mars in Scorpio in the seventh and you're a politician, you do have to be careful. Mars in Scorpio represents enemies and Mars is, is strong in Scorpio. Mars is in its own sign. So the horoscope contains a risk of assassination. That needs to be made clear. But the question is, when 
is that risk going to be at a maximum? Well, what I try to do is I do set up solar returns. And there is an argument about what solar return you should use. Should you use the solar return for where for where you're born when you have it because the solar return is where it, when the sun returns to where it was when you were born every year is that the chart you should use or should you consider um the chart of where you are at the time of your solar return now i don't know where bobby kennedy was on his birthday his birthday would have caught the birthday before he was assassinated, which would have been November the, around November the 20th, 1967, because he was assassinated on June the 5th, 1968. So where was he? I don't know. But what I have done is I've set up a solar return for his place of birth, which is Brooklyn, Massachusetts. And this is his solar return for his assassination for the year in which he was assassinated. You can see Mars is in Capricorn, conjunct the seventh house. It doesn't matter whether or not that Mars in Capricorn aspects his natal chart. The point is we have a repeated signature. In his natal chart, he had Mars in Scorpio in its own sign on his exactly on his seventh house cusp. In his Solar return for 1967, i.e. covering November the 20th, 1967 through to November the 20th, 1968, he has Mars in Capricorn in its exaltation conjunct his seventh house cusp. And that gives us a big warning that this is this is a time he this is a year he has to be really careful. And you might go further and say perhaps he was fated to be assassinated um, in that year maybe it was just something that was going to happen um then we can look at his uh solar arc directions um for when for his the day he was assassinated um so if i solar for his because he was so he was uh, assassinated when he was 25 so he would have been 42 years old um so uh Here's a chart for the assassination. Uh, Sorry, that's a chart of assassination. Um, I don't really want to go into that chart too much. What I'm more concerned about is the solar arc direction. So the solar arc direction. This is his solar arc direction uh, set for January the 22nd, 1926. So 42, everything moved forward around 42 days. Um, so if we do a by wheel, we put we put Robert Bobby Kennedy's chart in the middle, and we put his solar arc directed planets on the outside. And so he was born with Uranus at twenty one thirty eight thirty six Pisces. But if we direct it, we get Uranus moves forward to four degrees fifty Taurus. So directed Uranus is coming to the conjunction with his ascendant it's not quite there yet Uh, this is set for the day of his assassination so you could say well it wouldn't be exact until the next year around january around say june 1969 but then we look at his mars his natal mars is at four degrees 50 scorpio that natal mars on his ascendant solar art directed uranus was at four degrees 50 taurus so solar arc directed uranus was exactly opposition his mars when he was assassinated exactly and so we get the broad we get the overall theme there he was assassinated solar arc we get the mars sig- sorry the solar return he had mars on the descendant his natal chart he has mars on the descendant solar arc direction solar arc directed uranus was on his ascendant and solar arc directed uranus was exactly opposition his mars so i think very briefly we really do see um his assassination i think that seems to me um very clear another uh 
assassination victim was the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Um, she was assassinated on um, October the uh, on, on, on um, October the thirty first, nineteen eighty four. I remember what I was doing on October the first, nineteen eighty four. On October the thirty first, nineteen eighty four, I was in a I was in Kathmandu, uh, um, and um, the next day uh, we I f- we flew to uh, Patna from Kathmandu to Patna. So the day after her assassination, I was I was in India, and that was dramatic. <laughs> that was really dramatic. It was um, it was quite overwhelming. Um, it was. I, I just remember the crowds of people there, just silent, um, and it was in Patna. I'd seen, uh, you could see shops had been looted, and it was as if the people in India, uh, the people I could see, it was as if someone, a family member, had died. Uh, she was. It was incredibly big deal. We were, you know, staying in a hotel. We watched her her cremation on the on the tele on the, on the tele- television. Uh, yeah, it was it it was it was um, it was spectacular. I mean, I don't mean spectacular. It was quite over. Yeah, I would say overwhelming. Um, the experience of being in India the day after her assassination. Um, she was really important to them, you know. This assassin, you know, when I remember watching it on television, the Indian television channel, it was kind of associating because it was done on the banks of the Ganges, associating her, associating her as the, the mother of India, um, eternal like the Ganges. I can't remember precisely what the um, what the television was uh, was saying as it covered her her cremation. Um, uh, but yeah, looking at when I saw the people talking to people, it was as if it was as if their own relative had died. That that was my um, impression. But so this is her chart, and again, like Bobby Kennedy's chart, we do need to look at her horoscope um, to get an idea, a signature of uh, assassination, and we get a signif- we get a signature. We have Uranus on the descendant remember bobby kennedy had mars on her descendant in his natal chart um indira gandhi has got had has uranus on her descendant in her natal chart that gives her makes her in general vulnerable uh, i think it was an astrologer 19th century astrologer simonite i think it was simonite he said that having if you got uranus on a descendant it's death by the mob um louis the 16th had uranus on his descendant um uh, okay, it wasn't quite my by the mob, but uh, so she was killed by her own protection forces. For, you know, it was a it wasn't it was it, the reason she was murdered was um, the Sikhs were upset. Uh, I think uh, the Indian army had occupied um, the Sikh temple in Amritsar, and uh, they were really upset. They'd violated the temple, if I remember rightly, um, and. Uh, and her, yeah, her guards were Sikhs, and they and they uh, and they gunned her down. Uh, but yes, that Uranus on a descendant makes her vulnerable. Um, considering the day she was assassinated, uh, this is this is the day of her assassination, um, October the thirty first, nineteen eighty four, at uh, nine thirty a.m. Uh, then if we do, uh, if we look at uh, that chart, if we look at the transits, if we look at, if we look at it from a perspective of transits, uh, uh, so uh, that's, uh, we can, there is, uh, so Saturn was at, um so Saturn was at 1745 uh 70 degrees 45 minutes Scorpio uh at the time of her assassination so going back to 1745 Scorpio at the time of her assassination so there's her IC 
She had Saturn exactly on her IC um, when she was assassinated. Uh, let me just do that chart again. Uh, we'll, uh, that doesn't. Uh, that uh, that's better. So so there's her, there's her IC seventeen forty five. So she had Saturn to the minute. Notice with Bobby Kennedy, we had directed Uranus to the minute opposition his um, Mars. She had Saturn to the minute on her IC. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be assassinated. Saturn on the IC can mean different things. Um, but certainly in this case, that's what it meant. And I think maybe there's a hint here that... Um, if you look at Saturn and look at Mercury, this Saturn Mercury conjunction is starting to trigger her is starting to trigger not just the IC but that Uranus on the I Uranus on the um descendant. So Saturn is moving towards that Uranus, but Mercury is right there. Mercury is hitting her Uranus. And that Uranus in her natal chart was the signature of of assassination. OK, maybe not death by the mob, but death by one's own security guards. Um, it, from a point of view of solar arc direction, this is her solar arc directed chart, moving all the planets on um, for the amount of years she, she was alive when that happened. Uh, and then we can do the... Uh, uh, so here, her solar arc directed Mars was at 1710 Scorpio. So she had her solar arc directed Mars was also on the IC. And of course, Mars is the planet of, um, of violence. So I think there are a couple of points there about um, Indira Gandhi's assassination, which um, I think are quite important when we when we consider what, you know, what makes people vulnerable. A final chart I want to look at is John Lennon. Now, I used to think that we had a time of birth for John Lennon, but we actually don't. There used to be a time of birth, but now there's controversy about when he was born. Um, so uh, if we go to John Lennon's chart, this is his noon chart, I, uh, October the 9th, 1940. And... All I want to say about John Lennon's chart is, I don't want to go into great detail here, but John Lennon was born on a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. John Lennon was incredibly sensitive to the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions happen every 20 years. He was born on a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. 20 years later, there was a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, what, 1961, was when he really, really became big, obviously, with the Beatles. Uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Then he was, uh, he was murdered on um, December the 8th, 1980. And uh, he was murdered on a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Now, I understand a lot of people are born on Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions and they survive, they don't get killed on conjunction. But I think that uh, maybe John Lennon was so iconic, um, you know, so much a part of the era in which he was living that um, with that, that second Jupiter-Saturn opposite, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, you know, that was it. He'd done his bit. Remember the Beatles, but when did they split up around 1970? They split up around the time of the Jupiter-Saturn opposition. Uh, so again, he was very sensitive to the Jupiter-Saturn opposition. So for 10 years, you know, it was his solo career and having life beyond the Beatles. But when he hit 1980, when he, that second Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, it seems that the universe decided it wanted him to move on. Um, and so... In his case, I don't really want to look at the other. I'm not going to look at the other stuff and going on in his chart when he was assassinated. I think it was all about the Jupiter-Saturn um, conjunction. Anyway, um, those are five assassinations. Um, sorry, I was rather brief today, but um, there, 
wasn't really much going on astrologically today, so I was a bit brief with my readings for the 12 signs. Um, so I I hope you found that of some use. I uh, hope you uh, weren't bothered by my subject matter. I think assassinations are something that astrologers do need to consider. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would be grateful if you were to indicate the fact that you liked it. Um, if you're not subscribed, I would, of course, be grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.